Hello everyone, my name is Vasiliki Kalavri and I would like to welcome you to the tutorial Beyond Analytics, the evolution of stream processing systems. This tutorial has been prepared in collaboration with Paris Carbone, Marius Fragoulis and Asterios Katsifodimos. Unfortunately, Asterios could not be here with us today. So the tutorial is organized in six short parts and we will allow time for questions and discussion in between sessions. In this first introductory part, I will cover fundamental notions of stream processing and the background required to attend the following parts. This tutorial is about streaming systems, so we will not cover other aspects of stream processing such as synopsis, uh, streaming algorithms, languages and semantics, complex event processing and publish subscribe protocols. So why this tutorial and why now? The goal of this tutorial is threefold. So first, uh, we aim to review and highlight noteworthy past research findings, which uh, have been largely ignored until very recently. Second, uh, we intend to underline the differences between early and modern stream processing systems and how those systems have evolved through the years. Most importantly, uh, we wish to turn the attention of the database community to recent trends as streaming systems are no longer used only for classic stream processing workloads, uh, such as aggregates and joins, uh, but instead modern uh, systems are being increasingly used to deploy general event-driven applications in, uh, in a scalable fashion, and they challenge the design decisions, architecture, and intended use uh, of existing stream processing systems. So stream processing is today at its prime time. It is an established technology in the data analytics stack of uh, every modern business. All major cloud providers offer uh, streaming data flow pipelines and online analytics as managed, managed services. Some of the most popular include uh, AWS Kinesis, Alibaba uh, Real-Time Compute, both of which are based on Apache Flink, Azure Stream Analytics relying on uh, MSR Streel, uh, Google Cloud Dataflow, IBM Streams, and uh, Lightband, and so on. Uh, besides cloud providers, in the past few years, we also witnessed more and more companies building their own in-house streaming platforms so that their entire organization can leverage the power of online analytics. Uh, some of those companies include Uber, Netflix, and Facebook. A big part of this success is due to major efforts by open source communities. There exist tens of stream processing frameworks out there. I'm showing here just a few that happen to be under the Apache Software Foundation umbrella. Um, these projects are among the top active projects in the entire foundation. They have global communities, hundreds of contributors, thousands of users across the globe. And they're not research prototypes. These are uh, robust, battle-tested systems uh, powering some astounding applications. Uh, here are a few I'd like to mention. Alibaba City Brain uses streaming technology for traffic light adjustment in real time, so to clear paths for emergency vehicles and provide scheduling information for public transport. Yelp uses streaming technology to analyze user locations and provide them uh, with real-time recommendations with push notifications. Even more impressively, uh, stream processing is used for mission-critical applications. So NASA's Deep Space Network relies on Apache Kafka to provide monitoring support to dozens of these deep space missions. Now let's take a step back and examine the history of, stream processing, of the stream processing field and evaluate its current status. First, we could use uh, a definition. So a data stream is a data set that is produced incrementally over time, rather than being available in full before its processing begins. So data streams have some unique characteristics. Uh, they, uh, their length is unknown and possibly unbounded. Their elements generally bear a timestamp and they are produced by external sources. So as a result, the system ingesting or processing the stream has no control over the arrival order of its elements or the data rate. Stream processing is not a new field. It is almost 30 years old. In fact, uh, the first time the term continuous query appears in the literature 
is to the best of my knowledge in a Sigmund 1992 paper. Uh, the paper proposes a new classes of queries, uh, continuous queries, which are similar to conventional database queries, except that they are issued once and henceforth run continually over the database. So that paper presents the tapestry append-only database, but it wasn't until 2000 when the first specialized data uh, stream managers were developed. These systems coined the term data stream management system. And their design followed closely that of the database management system with some distinct features. So if we examine the architecture of such a, a data stream management system, it would look something like this. Uh, the system has uh, some kind of an input manager component that is responsible for ingesting the streams and it accepts both ad hoc and continuous queries and executes them in a query execution engine similar to that of a database management system. Two important additional components are the quality monitor and the load shedder. Uh, these are components that monitor stream input rates and query performance and selectively drop input records to meet target latency requirements. So these systems were designed uh, with a focus to provide fast but often approximate results to queries. So during the first period, uh, the research community spends a lot of time thinking about fundamentals. So streaming models, how do we represent streams? What are the operator semantics? How do we handle late data? Uh, how to estimate properties of unbounded streams? But they also uh, thought about systems aspects, especially about load management, high availability, and scheduling. And the focus was on getting answers to queries as fast as possible, sacrificing accuracy if necessary. So after the foundations had been laid out, MapReduce and Hadoop especially marked the beginning of the golden open source era for large-scale data management. So MapReduce shifts the focus towards data parallelism, fault tolerance, transfer and distribution, and the use of general purpose programming languages such as C++ and Java for expressing analytics on large unstructured uh, data. Uh, S4 and Storm are among the first MapReduce-like systems for uh, stream processing. Um, so stream processing witnessed its first production deployments alongside MapReduce and Hadoop batch processors, uh, and which implemented a setup known as the Lambda architecture. The idea is that incoming data are routed to two processing layers. The speed layer processes records as they arrive uh, with the best effort low latency stream processing system. The batch layer uh, stores data persistently and periodically submits MapReduce jobs uh, for offline analytics that complement the often lossy online results. So stream processing started being perceived as a synonym for approximate results. Now the MapReduce philosophy affected the design and implementation of the next generation of stream processing systems quite significantly. So we'll refer this to this uh, second generation as distributed data flow systems. These systems originated either in large companies, uh, SAMSA, Millwheel, Nyad, or at universities such as Spark, at uh, UC Berkeley, Flink, at TU Berlin. Uh, most fundamentally, uh, the most fundamentally novel characteristic of this generation of systems is probably their philosophy about the capabilities of stream processing. So they essentially reject the notion that stream processing is a synonym of approximate and lossy results, and they set to prove that stream processors can produce exact and correct results, even under failures, in an efficient way. So the system architecture of a modern stream processor has become quite complex. The runtime um, is usually deployed on shared nothing clusters of machines, Workers are connected over the network and execute operators in the data parallel fashion. Uh, queries process raw streams and results are exact. Some uh, differentiated, differentiating features as compared to data stream management systems are that um, queries are configured independently and executed as independent jobs. 
A state is managed and sometimes it's backed by external key value stores. So every operator or every query maintains its own state. And uh, they support fault tolerance, usually exactly once fault tolerance, uh, with uh, checkpoints and replayable inputs. Let's look more closely into modern stream processing systems and the fundamental concepts that they're built on. So computations are represented as data flow graphs, where the nodes are operators that define transformations on streams, and the edges are data dependencies uh, and denote data flow. Programs are usually written in a high-level declarative API uh, in a language like Java, uh, Scala, or, or Python. So when a data flow job is submitted for execution, uh, the stream processor translates the, the job logic into a physical data flow, data flow plan and submits it to a cluster for execution. Now workers execute operators in a data parallel fashion. So operator instances run on disjoint partitions of input streams. So while in data stream management systems, multiple queries would be combined into a single data flow graph and optimized as a group, in data flow systems, uh, we execute queries in isolation and uh, apply very limited lo logical optimization before deployment. So to summarize, the second generation of streaming systems introduce data parallelism uh, state management, exactly one semantics, and custom operator logic uh, to streaming data flows. So systems, of course, have continued to evolve uh, since uh, the advent of distributed data flows, and we'll cover the most recent trends as well as open problems in the last part of this tutorial today. Uh, this table summarizes the main differences between early and modern streaming systems. So we highlight here the dominant trends of the era, and this is not intended to be used as a reference of the design of particular systems. Uh, more importantly, uh, many fundamental concepts that were developed in the first generation have actually survived, uh, but you will probably encounter them in today's stream processors with different names. So in terms of input, the, uh, the majority of early systems assume in-order streams or use buffering and ordering operators at ingestion. Out-of-order ingestion and operators that can transparently handle out-of-order and delay data are more prevalent in today's systems. Um, while data stream management systems were capable of producing both exact and approximate results, Modern systems focus on result correctness and they have largely rejected the notion of approximation. In terms of languages, uh, modern systems have, uh, can be programmed in general purpose languages uh, like Java, Scala, Python. However, uh, we do recently witness a trend uh, to return to streaming extensions for streaming SQL. While early systems would construct a global plan for multiple queries in order to share inputs, intermediate results, and optimization, most modern systems run streaming queries as independent jobs, and they apply little to no logical optimization or sharing. Uh, over the years, execution has also gradually transitioned, transitioned from mainly centralized to mainly distributed uh, exploiting data, pipeline, and task parallelism. So in the tutorial, we'll focus on the four highlighted critical aspects of streaming systems. Uh, the part on time and progress uh, will explain um, and compare early progress mechanisms, such as heartbeats and punctuations, to mechanisms used today, uh, such as watermarks and frontiers. And then uh, the part on state management will cover the evolution of streaming state from in-memory synopsis uh, to the large partitioned and persistent state that we encounter today. Then the part on fault tolerance will discuss early high availability mechanisms as well as more recent snapshot based approaches for exactly once guarantees. And finally, the part on load management will cover the load shedding and load aware scheduling approaches of data stream management systems to the back pressure and elasticity approaches of today. Thank you very much and see you in the next parts of the tutorial.